I was reminded of the lesson. A prophetic lesson. I remember I was working with her. We were at crossing. She said crossing. Some years back. And we met this white guy. He was with his sons. He's from Babaton. His wife used to be a coordinator for synagogue. One of his sons used to be one of the evangelists there. I remember as we were talking with him, he said this. He said, there is a prophecy that was released that the trigger will be pulled from West Africa. Nigeria to be precise. When that trigger is pulled, South Africa, that's where the fire must come. You know when you pull the trigger of the gun, a bullet must come out from the front. In fact, the revival the revival. Are you hearing me properly? The revival. That's where it must come out from South Africa. The revival of the end times. If you did not know this prophet, and now you know it. But the enemy is not happy. He will make sure that that prophecy does not come to pass. South Africa was supposed to be great by South now. South Africa was supposed to lead by now. Not, not only in the continent, but in the whole world. There are certain things South Africa was supposed to lead in. And what God has said, it must come to pass. But South Africa, South Africa has now allowed rebellion to obstruct the prophecy of God. Are we, are, we, are we all ready? So I want you to understand that before I start talking, I'm talking based on a prophetic word. I remember Evangelist Anne preaching the other day. And she said, the Bible says, which is in the book of Samuel, rebellion is as much as witchcraft. Sin is just like idolatry. This is not just a, this is not a slogan. It's from the word of God. And recently I was listening to the prophet. Prophet uh, Ian Glove. Ian Waganjovu from Zimbabwe. And he retaliated the prophecy I just told you. And he said, So I felt strong in my in my spirit today. Because throughout the week I tried, I was asking God, what do you want me to tell your people? It was difficult. But last night, this prophecy was put in my spirit again. This morning, I was sitting in our bedroom alone there. God brought this song. South Africa has forgotten where God took it from. And 
in South Africa is the people. South Africa, si me bantu fume. I'm talking to South Africans, the people. When I say South Africa, I'm talking to all of you. And those that are out there. I remember evangelists and saying these words. There are other issues, pride. When you're proud, your pride can distort the plan of God. When you are proud, your worst enemy can become your best friend and vice versa. Because the relationship you have with your enemy is not for God's sake but it's for selfish and classic and material reasons. If you don't see these things that are mentioning in your country, pride leads to rebellion. You can check in the history of the word of God. You go to Genesis, you'll find these things. You go to Genesis 11, you'll find these things. God gave men or human beings one language. One language. So that when they speak, they can hear one another. The reason why that whole thing was confused is because men, because of pride, rebelled against God and they thought they can be like God. That is why we have this mess today. If I can speak another language, you might not hear me. That's why we've got so many religions. And we come up with laws that promote even stupid religions. South Africa. In South Africa. How on earth do you allow a satanic church? To be legalized in your country. How? Yesterday I had my our president was in our province. But I understand he was just for a few minutes. I wish there was a platform where he could be asked questions. How on earth do you allow a satanic church to be legalized in our country when there is a prophetic word from God that the revival organized by God is supposed to erupt from this country. How can that happen if we have such things happening? You've got other people who are quiet about it who are supposed to talk. I'm not saying these things because I want to be popular. I don't say these things because I want people to know me. But I stand on the prophetic word of God. A trigger has been pulled. Fire must come out from this country. The fire of God. The revival from above. It cannot happen when we have rebellion. When we have pride. When a man wants to be a woman. When a, a woman wants to be a man. It cannot happen. It's not possible. And what do you call that? That is rebellion. It's not fashion. You need servants of God who will speak and say what I'm saying. For those who are listening, this leads me to my message today. I want you to sit back wherever you are, even at home, and listen to this word as we go through today. Dear 
delayed revival. Due to contaminated cancel or prophecy. Delayed revival. Due to contaminated cancel or prophecy. The prophecy released by God. It will surely come to pass. But what is delaying it now is the contamination. There are people that are contaminating the prophecy of God. There are prophecies that are contaminated, that are contaminating the real prophecy of God. South Africa. In South Africa. In Africa. Africa Don't despise small beginnings. Check where God has took you from. Where God has taken you from. Don't look at yourself and say you're small. Let's read the book of Zachariah. Chapter 4, verse 10. Satuga 4, verse 10. For they shall rejoice and shall see the plumbers in the hand of Zerubbabel with those servants. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. Okay, read it again. I want you to read it in your strategy food. Zagaria chapter 4, verse 10. For who had despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those servants. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. Yes, what does it say? Ubani lo ekelela lilanga litimbo litingani. Ema po ema poza ayaucha bula lagabona inzambo. Small beginnings. Who is despising small beginnings? Why do you look down on where you were taken from, where you started? You were taken from nothing. Some of you are occupying big positions now. And some of those positions is to lead the people of God. But you're forgetting where you were taken from by God. Now that you are sitting where you're sitting, you, th you think you can rebel against God. You think you can contaminate the prophecy of God. The prophecy I mentioned at the beginning is supposed to happen but it's contaminated by pride and rebellion that is in the land by the people even people of God by the people why do you forget where God is taking you from? you think this freedom that you're talking about came on its own. It did not come on its own. People did not lose lives because they liked that. It happened so that you can be where you are. But the moment you are where you are, you forget where God has taken you from. I'm here as a servant of God and I want to challenge you today as you are listening to this word of God. I'm saying to you, do not delay 
the prophecy of God. Because if God decides to retaliate, you will not like it. Right now we are in a situation. God has allowed it. Has allowed it. Because he wants everyone to be humble. Every knee should go down. But we still have leaders who can see that. We still have children of God who can see that. They forget where God has taken them from. They continue to perpetuate institutionalized corruption. Even during this time, when people are dying, money is issued out. But there are people who think they can still do corruption even during this time. I'm saying, it is important to remember where God has taken you from. Don't contaminate the prophecy of God. Don't. Rebellion leads to discontentment. No, 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 no. When you are discontent, when you are content, you are satisfied. Yes. I was looking at the newly elected president of Malawi. He is also a minister from what he's saying. I, I loved the speech. And I pray that God can keep him that way. Because the leaders we have today, the moment God picked them, and put them in a position, they forget where they come from. We are living in a country, and especially South Africa, where people are not satisfied. You think Sodom and Gomorrah just happened. And you think on the last day, those people will not blame God for leaving you when as you are doing what they did. Then the Bible will be a lie. Then the word we read in, in the Bible will be a lie. Because the word of God says, those people will blame God. Why did you treat us like that? If you left South Africans to live like this. I'm saying to you, your rebellion is leading you not to be satisfied with what God has done and given you. Let's read Proverbs 17, verse 11. As for the Daga 17, verse 11. If you found it, read it. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 11. An evil man seeketh only rebellion. Therefore, a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. Mm. Read it again. An evil man seeketh only rebellion. Mm -hmm. Therefore, a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. You can ask yourself, who is this cruel messenger? 
The Bible is talking about death there. A rebellious person. If they continue to rebel, there is a cruel messenger. The word of God is talking about death there. If you continue to rebel against God, be it a leader, be it civilians, if you continue to rebel like that, there is a cruel messenger. If you can't see what is happening now, then you have a problem. Read it in Swazi. Maybe others might hear it if it sounds in Gunish. Umumfu lo mubi, la timisela kupamba la nemtepo. Uyaye apunyelelwe umkichimi, lo tesihe, guzi ate upigala la. We hear of hearsay that something worse like coronavirus is coming. And you continue rebelling against God in that little corner where you are. Because you forgot where God has taken you from. An evil messenger, according to the word of God, is sent against you. Don't Verse 3, verse 34. Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. Uyabatega labo labi isako. Gopa unemusa gulaba probegi. Those of you who think Me. God cannot be angry. By the end of what is happening today in the whole world. If you still can't see. Worse than coronavirus will come. Because every knee must bow. Every knee must bow. That is the plan of God. Proverbs 13, verse 12. From verse 12 to verse 14. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. Hope defiant maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. The law of the wise is a fountain of life. To depart from the snares of death. Will you jump to verse 18? Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction. But he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. Poverty and shame. 
will visit those who despise instruction. We are in an economic recession now. And because we've got so many statements from everywhere, and we sort of comfort one another. I know it will come to pass. What is the instruction of the word of God saying? Are we following it? Are we respecting it? Poverty and shame will visit those who despise instruction. Instruction from God. He does that through his word by his spirit. The word of God says God does nothing until he reveals it to his prophets. But when his prophets speak, there are those who contaminate what the prophets of God are saying. Don't be part of them. As a leader, as a leader, as a child of God, don't be part of people who contaminate the word of God, who contaminate the prophecies of God. Don't be like them. When you do that, poverty and shame will be a guest in your house. Yes, what it in verse 18. Umumbu longa inagi imba pa chopo. Uya puya atazeg. Gopa umumbu loe mugela gutsetsi iswa. Uya gushoni peka. Uya gushoni peka. Allow the word of God to put you in line. Allow the word of God to align your life. Some people were doing calculations of how many people have already died all over the world. There's a lot of people who have already died. But if you do not hear words like this, messages like this, prophetic words like this, poverty and shame will be the guests in your house. There's another story in the word of God. Of Ahab. And Jehoshaphat. You remember Ahab wanted uh, Jehoshaphat to accompany him. In the book of Kings. So that he can go and fight. Little did he know. That God was planning something against him because of the many other things that Ahab and his family have done. Even though they were rulers of Israel. Maybe you are that kind of a leader. You are busy planning. You are busy plotting. You are busy conniving. But little do you know the plan of God against you. And the Bible says there were 400 prophets that stood in front of Ahab and Jehoshaphat. Because Jehoshaphat trusted God. So he's advising his friend or his colleague. Don't you have prophets who can come and tell us something about this battle that we are going to. 
How many of you as leaders today are consulting with God? I love Jehoshaphat. The Bible doesn't say he was a priest. The Bible doesn't say he was a prophet. He was a king. But now his colleague wants to be accompanied to a battle. But as a wise king, Jehoshaphat says, let us inquire from the Lord. How many of you sitting where you are sitting can do what Jehoshaphat did? The Bible says Ahab called the 400 prophets to come and give a word about the battle. And as they came there, they spoke in one word. Why did they speak in one way? Because God also had his own plan, which the king, King Ahab, did not know. He thought it was business as usual. The Bible tells me after they spoke in one word, Jehoshaphat was not satisfied. As a king, he, he was even above other priests who can descend. He said, I have had the 400. But is there no other prophet that can come and give us the word from the Lord? What did the 400 say? Which word were they speaking? What kind of a word was it? 400 prophets. And Ahab said, There is one, Micaiah. I hate him because he always prophesies negative things against me. Jehoshaphat said, Let me go there. The Bible says he came. And maybe he was doing as I'm doing today. Maybe I'm not saying what you like as a president. Maybe I'm saying what you don't like as a man of God. Because you think these things we must sit upon them. But I'm challenging you today by the word from God. And I say we cannot be quiet when the word from God is being contaminated. Ahab did not know the plan of God. And that one prophet came that he hated. And he began to speak. And immediately he spoke. Ahab said, you see, you see, I told you that this one Always, he doesn't speak things that I like. He prophesies against me. Micaiah said, I want to, let's, let's go to the word of God. I want you to hear what this prophet of God said. Different from the 400. First Kings chapter 22. Let's go there. You can read from verse 1. I'll tell you where to go also. First Kings chapter 22, verse 1. And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, 
I pray in thee that the word of the Lord to his day. Can you jump to verse 12? Verse 12. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper. For the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. Imagine the 400. Agreed. And they spoke in one word. How many people today around you as a leader, as a child of God, agree to lie to you and tell you what is not the truth. And you are taking it. If you do not have Jehoshaphat next to you, you are going to be in trouble. And the Bible says when they went to call Micaiah, the person who was calling him said to him, I want to advise you. Other people, they spoke in one word. When you reach there, don't be a fool. Just speak like they did. And Micaiah, because he was full of the wisdom of God, did not take that advice. When he got in front of the king, he began to prophesy as the Spirit of God led him. Read verse 17. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills mm -hmm. as sheep that have not a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. Mm -hmm. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? And he said, Hear thou, therefore, the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, mm -hmm. and all the host of heaven standing by him on mm -hmm. his right hand and mm -hmm. on his left. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Who shall pursue Ahab, that he may go up and fall? The Lord had his own agenda. He had his own agenda. So as a leader where you are right now, as you are busy planning your own things, planning how you are going to run the country, inquire what is the plan of God for that country. I say the plan of God for South Africa is different from what I see the leaders doing today. The plan of God for this country it is different from what what you are planning. Micaiah said, I love this prophet. He says, I see. He forgot those people who are in front of him. He forgot the kings with their robes. He said, I see the Lord sitting on his throne. He says, as God was on his throne, he said, who can entice Ahab for me? Because I want to deal with him. Maybe you're that kind of a president. That God wants somebody to entice you so that you can be dealt with because you are contaminating the prophetic word of God, the plan of God for this country. The Lord is waiting for somebody who will entice you to go to that plan that you planned. To go to that battle that you want to go and fight. The Lord has a different plan because you want to deal with you.
Instead of leading the people of God. Listen to what Mikai says. I see the people of God scattered. Without a shepherd. They are like sheep without a shepherd. Is it not what is happening in this country? While the Lord was still saying, who can entice this man? The Bible says a lying spirit came to the front. A lying spirit did not manifest in front of the throne of God. It was given permission. He says, I can go. I've been watching him. I want to go and entice him. Because I want him there in hell. I want to go there. I'll go there. Like a lying spirit and enter him. I will enter all those prophets. And as the spirit entered them, they spoke in one word. The Lord said, you will go and you will succeed. The Lord is saying to the lying spirit, you will go and you will succeed in your things. Because I want somebody who can entice this man. And as you read the story, Ahab went. Even though he tried to disguise, the Lord was looking for that opportunity. The Bible says among the armies there was a man there. He shot an arrow into the air. That was not an ordinary arrow. I believe it had the eyes of the Lord. Even though Ahab disguised, it went and searched for him. And he was struck by that arrow. Maybe you're that kind of a leader whom the Lord wants somebody to entice you because you have been leading people astray. Because you have been leading people into rebellion. You are the cause of the rebellious spirit that is filled in the houses of the people of God. The rebellious spirit that is in the children of God. The rebellious spirit that is in the young men and the young women of this country. You are encouraging it. And the Lord is looking for you. You can make amends. You can make amends and change your lifestyle right now. And not forget where the Lord has taken you from. That position you're holding today, the material things you have today, you know where the Lord has taken you from. Don't forget the small beginnings where you started, where you were taken from by God. The Lord wants to change the course and direction of this country. For the prophetic word that he has released, it must surely come to pass. The plan God has for this country, it must surely come to pass. And I stand here, and I stand in the counsel of God, and I say to you, just like Micaiah, the Bible says when Micaiah said what he said, when he prophesied like that, some other chap came and slept him because they were expecting him to speak like the rest but he stood his ground that even when they were taking him away he says if what I said doesn't come to pass then the Lord that I spoke from as the Lord lives what I say will come to pass you will go and fight but you will not come back God is waiting for such people who will be so brave to tell our leaders that they need to inquire from the Lord. Don't 
Don't be part of the people that are contaminating the prophetic word. Let's prophet. This country is standing on a prophetic word. Don't be part of the people that are contaminating that way. Don't obstruct the plan of God. Because God will look for people to entice you so that you go to that battle. But you'll go there and not come back. Some people this year, as leaders who don't listen to God, they will not make it to the next year. Some leaders this year, as people who are obstructing the plan of God, they will be enticed into some wrong battles and they will not come back. I stand here as a servant of God and I'm saying to you, poverty and shame visit those who don't listen to the instruction of God. Maybe you are there at home, you're a child of God. You are not a leader. And you have been very rebellious. You rebelled against God. You rebelled against the plan of God for your life. In Jeremiah, God is saying, the plans I have for you are good and not to harm you. Who is lying to you that you must change who you are? Who is lying to you that you must not be satisfied with what God has given you? Be content with what God wants to give you. And as you are sitting at home, I think this message, you have heard it loud and clear. We would like to hear from you as God is touching your heart right now. Just like he touched me this morning. So remind me, where would I be He's the only one who knows. If it was not because of his grace, I would not be standing here today. If it was not because of his grace, South Africa was not to come out, was not going to come out of apartheid. It did not come out of apartheid because of your power or your might. But it was the grace of God. Don't despise small beginnings. As a child of God sitting where you are sitting right now, I want you to reflect back where God has taken you from. You could have died. You could have been hurt. But by his grace, you are alive today. I want to challenge you today that this word you just heard, it is important that you take it seriously. Don't be part of the people that contaminate the word of God, especially the prophetic word of God. If you are still sick, God heals. He heals even coronavirus. You will sweat it out right now. It will come out as you go to the bathroom. It will come out if you believe. Wherever you are right now, as I ask God to open the windows of healing to descend into your house right now, whether you believe or not, I'm asking God to touch your life right now. Maybe some of you, because this generation for them to believe they want to see a sign. Let it be a sign today when you get healed. Let it be a sign today when you get delivered. That spirit that has been tormenting your life, causing you to rebel against God, causing you to have pride, I command it out of your body. I command it out of your life. You coronavirus, you are just part of other sicknesses. You are a stranger in that body. Out in the mighty name of Jesus. Out in the mighty name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. Be healed in your stomach. Be healed in your lungs. Be healed in your chest right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Receive your healing from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Whatever cancer that is there in your stomach, whatever cancer that is sitting there, is a stranger in that body. Out in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed now. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive divine health. 
from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed right now. Be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. You demon. You are a stranger in that house. In the mighty name of Jesus. The way you've entered is the way you're going to come out right now. I command you in the name of Jesus. Out in the mighty name of Jesus. Come out in the mighty name of Jesus. Out in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the deliverance. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering your people. Thank you, Jesus, for healing that man, for healing that young man, for healing that young woman. Thank you for healing that old lady, that old man right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the healing. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for delivering them from rebellious spirits. Thank you for delivering them from from pride in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for delivering them from all of satanic devices that are on in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You spirit of lust that is tormenting the body of my brother, tormenting the life of my sister. I command you in the name of Jesus. Out in the mighty name of Jesus. I separate you from him right now. You spirit from the pit of hell that is tormenting that marriage. I command you in the name of Jesus. Whatever you've done, enough is enough. Take your load and get out. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are a stranger in that life. You are a stranger in that house. I command you out right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Father, for delivering that marriage. Any animal that has been stealing from you, destroying your finances, any demon that is responsible for the failure of your marriage, right now in the name of Jesus, I command it out of your life, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for delivering that family. Thank you, Father, for delivering that child, for healing that child, for correcting that organ in that body. Thank you for replacing the parts of the body right now. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever you are right now, if you believe, I declare you healed in the name of Jesus. I declare you delivered in the name of Jesus. I don't want to leave you without leading you to Christ. Leading you to salvation. Maybe you want to come back to God. Maybe you have never known the Lord in your life. The enemy has been contaminating the message you were receiving. Right now is the time for you to make right with God. Wherever you are in your house, in your office, in the hospital, wherever you might be listening to this message right now, you can kneel down or stand up and raise your hands and you pray after me and say, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for dying in my place. Thank you for hanging on the cross because of me. Thank you for paying that price. Thank you for dying so that I can have life. From today, I live my life and I take your life. I take your character. I leave everything of the devil. And I follow you. In the name of Jesus. If you prayed this prayer, you are now a born again child of God. You don't operate like people of the world. You make the word of God the standard for your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Viewers. Wherever you are right now, we want to hear from you. We'd like to hear from you. We want to hear the testimonies that you have. What God is doing in your life as you're listening to this word. This preaching is not to make anybody popular, but it's to correct the wrongs that are there. We need the Micaiahs in our communities. We need the true prophets of God that will speak without being afraid. We need all the people that we read about in the word of God that stood for this gospel. 
So wherever you are right now, let God help you. As you watch us, we are on all media platforms, social media platforms. You check us on Facebook, you check us on Instagram and others. So I would like to hear from you. Until we meet again next week, I say to you, Emmanuel, and good morning, and win again. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Asante Dr. Mkanda. Dr. Shia Suguma. Suguma Jisong. Hallelujah. All right. We don't have enough time as we have set up quickly.